We came by Maria in a big boat. It was a terrible days. We left under a storm. It was really the worst day of my entire life. It was uh, 25 hours of constant sickness uh, of people who were cramped. So it was really tough. Um, it was really tough to go through. The first thing I remember about you know America uh, was when we landed uh, in the port in uh, Key West. I remember feeling afraid of you know letting go of my mother and my mother telling me it was okay. Baila, 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 baila. Is Pedro developed a very special bond with his mother? To this day, Pedro is always referred to his mother as not only his mom but his best friend, and they would stay up all night playing Chinese checkers or singing to Cuban music. When Pedro was 11, a mole on his mother's face changed shape. By the time she had it checked out. The, scan the, the cancer had spread. By the time he was 13, she had died. The last week of my mother's life, I remember talking with Pedro, and I said, oh, Pedro, you know what mom have? And he said, no. And I said, she has cancer. She's going to die very soon. And I remember at that time, I realized how strong Pedro is. Uh, I remember him that he's not crying. He not cry loud at all. I remember crying and crying, and he, he don't cry. It affected him on, obviously, a lot of levels. It was at that time that he did decide that he wanted to go into the medical profession. His dream was to become a doctor, to be able to help people that were in the situation, like his mother was. He felt so helpless with, with seeing her deteriorate. But it also affected him on a, on a personal level. It, it, it had an incredible impact. He was not able to grieve for her passing. And Pedro went to denial. And he dealt with it in two ways. One is he threw himself into school. Pedro's a brilliant, brilliant student. He was at the top of his class. He was the captain of the cross-country team. He was president of the science club. He was voted most intellectual. He was voted most all-round. The second thing he did was party. Pedro used to go out and have unsafe, promiscuous sex. The affection that he was missing from having his mother around, just simple hugs and kisses, he was seeking it through sex with strangers. This girl comes in and says, the American Red Cross is here and it's asking us to donate blood. And then the teacher said, well, anybody who goes and donates blood um, could be excused for the day. And I said, ah, this is my ticket out of taking the test. So I went and donated blood. And um, about a month and a half later, I received a letter from the American Red Cross saying that one of the tests that they had done was positive. Uh, it didn't say HIV, it didn't say AIDS. And finally, after six months, I went to a private doctor and got tested. And in November of 1989, at age 17, tested positive for the HIV virus. He went into complete denial at the beginning, total. So I said, okay, and I walked out, and as I was walking to the car, it hit me. Uh, it was almost like I, 10,000 different emotions, 10,000 different questions popped into my mind, and I just broke down and cried. Uh, and the questions were like, am I gonna die, when, how, um, am I gonna have enough time to graduate from high school? After the denial period, and he became, started accepting, um, he went to Body Positive, which is a support center for HIV-positive individuals. There he expressed his interest in maybe doing some educating, since he knew that there was such a great need for it. And he went through certain training, through the Red Cross, through HIV courses, so he got all this training, and then he was put to uh, sort of the test to speak in front of an audience. It's not who you are that gives you the disease, it's what you do. I was an honor student. It couldn't happen to me. And everybody was just blown away. I am very angry. I am angry as a teenager. Pedro speaks to large crowds, and his collection of name tags proves he's a very popular speaker. But he mostly speaks to small classrooms of students. Little by little, the word got around that here was this charismatic speaker who was having an effect on, who was reaching young people in such an intense way. And there was a greater demand, and colleges started asking for him. And soon enough, uh, he was uh, traveling all over the United States. We always talk about how condoms are uncomfortable, they're too tight. If a condom is too small, <laughs> go see a doctor. 
Then, around the time he was 19, Eric Morgenthau wrote this incredible article about him on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. And then Pedro came to sort of a national focus. Suddenly, he was in the position of having to decide, you know, did he want to do Good Morning America or CBS Morning News? And he sort of went on from there and became quite prominent. How'd you get into it? Facts. Um, you know, A's is transmitted this, this, and this way. Uh, this is a condom, this is whatever. But sex is about emotion. It's not really about the intellectual. What do you have to say? It's, this is not a moral issue, this is a health issue. And we have to look at it from that standpoint. He also uh, had a few incredible uh, sort of crowning achievements. He, he did get to uh, testify before Congress. If you want to reach me as a young gay man, especially a young gay man of color, then you need to... And I watch it, and I'm still in awe of that, the way he carries himself and can stand his ground and, and, and speak and be so honest. You know, since I was uh, 18 years old, I've been doing age education across the country, and I remember um, when I started doing it, how angry I was. And I remember that I promised myself never to stop doing it, that until my life But I was going to educate my community. Now I spend more and more time worrying about my doctor appointments. And I wonder now, as I look around me, who's gonna pick up my torch? Did you just stick your finger in there? No. He walks right by me, puts his finger in the peanut butter, just licks it and goes on. Oh my. <laughs> This is exactly who I did not want to live with. I did it! <laughs> I was the one who sort of talked them into doing the show. This is the true story. I didn't have to work too hard at it because he's a ham. <laughs> Let's keep our names straight. Judd, Pamela, Mohammed, Corrine, Rachel, Pedro. We did the video and the interview and, uh, and he was a nervous wreck. Half of my brothers are in Cuba and half I are here. Oops. <laughs> we were like two little kids, uh, waiting to hear every day, checking messages, checking the phone every two minutes. And when he was chosen, he was so happy. I mean, I know he wanted to reach as many people as possible with his message. Uh, it was uh, the audience that he wanted to reach because he didn't want to just lecture about it and talk about it. He wanted people to actually see how somebody with AIDS lived. Uh, we're going to miss you like crazy, you know that. And there are six people in San Francisco who are very lucky because they're going to meet a great person. Yay! I remember when he told me that this is what he wanted to do, apply for these things, and I say, oh my God, you're crazy, Pedro. This is not for you. And he say, no, that's the only opportunity that maybe that I can have to, to get out, you know, to everyone on this world. And it's true. And he do it. And there's a lot of reasons why he could have done it. And it's very daring to do. I think that it's really scary to go on national TV and say, I know I have AIDS and I'm gay. For somebody who knows that they have AIDS, um, who knows that he, he has a limited time left, has come to terms with that, um, I think it was a very brave decision for him to say, I'm gonna go to San Francisco and I'm gonna live with six other people that I don't know anything about, that I might not like, and in the process, lose time with the family. I'm Pedro. Pardon me? I'm Pedro. I'm Corey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I think that it was a very calculated and very courageous decision that Pedro made in deciding to participate in a project of this nature. I'm Pedro. Pedro, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. And you know, I think that it was a way to reach millions and millions of young people and young adults. I think it was part of his plan.